Welcome to How Stuff from Cargo's channel. In today's video, I'm going to explain how the mass airflow sensor and the MAP sensor affect the amount of fuel that is delivered depending on driving conditions. During the last video, I explained how the throttle position sensor and the idle air control valve work. So the goal today is to continue explaining the remaining of the sensors that are part of the complete fuel injection system. That way you can understand them better and by the time we complete the series, you will be able to better understand how the entire fuel system works on your vehicle. So no different than the previous videos, I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera up close. That way you can see the items and you'll be able to identify them in your own vehicle. Okay, so just a short recap on the components. Fuel pump module, fuel rail for the V8 engine, fuel rail for the 4 cylinder engine, ECM, fuel pump relay, throttle body unit with two injectors, throttle body unit for the multi-port fuel injector with the idle air control valve and the throttle position sensor, the new style of an electronic throttle body unit that doesn't have a TPS or an idle air control valve, it's on this part right here, and today we're going to focus on the mass airflow sensor and the MAP sensor. So here are the two sensors that we're going to be talking about today. The MAP sensor is going to be found on older systems. The very first fuel injection systems that were created usually have a MAP sensor, which a MAP sensor stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. And even though the name itself says that it reads the pressure, in reality it reads the amount of vacuum that the engine has. I made a video recently that shows how to test it with a vacuum gauge and it also shows what it looks like as far as the voltage that it sends out using a voltmeter and a handheld scanner. The mass air pulse sensor is slightly different. This one is going to be found on most modern fuel injection systems and it reads the amount of air that is passing through. The air needs to be filtered first before it passes through and the way it measures how much air it's going through is the computer is sending power to a heating element that's located inside and as it's trying to heat it up when the air passes through based on the information that the ECM has already been programmed it's going to know what amount of air it's going to take to cool it down to a certain temperature most mass airflow sensor units are going to have the air intake temperature as part of the same thing that way all the info that is needed to calculate the amount of air is going to be containing one unit and the reason why it's important to know the temperature of the air is because what I just said the way it knows it is by trying to cool the heating element down but if you're talking winter time the air is going to be pretty cold versus the summer time so the computer already has that information to know exactly the amount of air that's going through regardless of climate temperature no different than the math sensor if you browse our channel you're going to see a video that we did that talks about the mass airflow sensor only. So I'm not going to go into the specifics of each one since we already made the videos and we don't want to make this too long. The whole idea right now is what we've been doing with this series is to explain how does each part enable the ECM to modify the amount of fuel that is injected by the fuel injectors to each cylinder. So both of them are going to accomplish the same thing uh, the mass airflow sensor obviously as more air passes through and the reason why there's going to be more air is because obviously you're accelerating and the butterfly is opening so larger amount of air are passing through so that means that there's more fuel needed and how this is modified is by keeping the injectors open longer because the injectors are opening and closing in milliseconds they do that hundreds of thousands of times throughout the day so just like I said the more air passes through the longer each injector stays open each time that way more fuel is injected to each cylinder and all of this is fluctuating in fractions of a second on and on you know up and down as you accelerate as you stop as you, as you cruise map sensor is similar like I said it's more for older designs on the video that I made about the map sensors only I show how when you accelerate the vacuum drops and the reason why there is vacuum as I explained it is because when the pistons go down they create some kind of a vacuum just like when you pull a syringe it's the same effect so the map sensor is going to know it and is going to know 
based on the TPS position and the amount of vacuum, how much fuel is going to be needed by the injectors based on the conditions. So, different designs, different ways that they operate, but at the end they accomplish the same thing. The symptoms of a bad map sensor is just like the old carbureted engines. When you accelerate and you try to take off, the engine is going to hesitate, like it's not getting enough fuel but it's not going to be so much that it doesn't have fuel, especially if you read it with a fuel pressure gauge. It's going to be that the mass sensor is not sending the correct signal to the computer about how much the vacuum dropped and because of that it's not going to inject the correct amount of fuel. The mass airflow sensor, similar, you accelerate, you try to take off, it's going to lack power. In extreme cases it may hesitate, same thing, just like it would with a bad map sensor. The mass airflow sensors, one of the things that you want to do is make sure that they're clean, that the element inside is clean. Sometimes when the air filter starts malfunctioning, debris passes through. Or vehicles that the owners may install an aftermarket cold air intake system, the oil from the filter may get into the sensing element. So there's a product that is called mass airflow sensor cleaner, which is designed for that. It's not going to damage it. So you might want to clean it first. But the symptoms are similar, like I said. The computer is not going to know that there is a larger amount of air going through and because of that it's only going to inject lower amount of fuels just like if it was just cruising or at idle. So no matter how much you step on the throttle, it's going to inject a lot less fuel. Now it's going to throw a code because if the TPS is working, the computer is going to know that you're accelerating. But at the same time there is no air going through so there's going to be a discrepancy like wait a minute. So we're accelerating but there's no air going through, what's going on here? So it's going to throw a code, either a TPS or a mass airflow sensor, but it'll give you a starting point. So prior to replacing parts like this, the reason why I started this series the way I did is because you want to start with a mechanical piece. So you want to test your fuel pressure and make sure that that is accurate. So when you know that your fuel system is working correctly, then you can move on to the sensors. And based on their operation, you can pinpoint what the problem could be. Thankfully, every ECM is going to have already predetermined values that when those parameters are out of the norm, they're going to trigger a code, which is going to give you a starting point. So, remember, the MAP sensor and the mass airflow sensor, they're both used to indicate the amount of air that is entering the engine, so the ECM can either increase the amount of fuel that's being delivered by the injectors, or decrease the amount of fuel that's being delivered. So obviously, as you can tell, today's video was super simple. The reason for that is just like I mentioned, we're focusing on what effect each sensor has when it comes to the fuel delivery on the overall fuel system. I already made a video for this one by itself. I already made a video for the map sensor by itself. So you can always browse them and learn a little bit more about each one. This is going to conclude today's video. On the next video, I'll explain either one or two more of the sensors that are involved in the complete fuel system. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time.